This programme is the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Welcome along to Alton Park for the penultimate meeting of the season for the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Unfortunately, we've been blighted by rain. It's going to make things very tricky this weekend. Now, Glenn, we haven't seen you out for some time. I was watching the qualifying times this morning, though, and uh, you put pretty good times in there. Uh, disappointed this morning. We were testing yesterday was uh, was pretty good. Uh, went out this morning thinking I'd done better. Uh, I mean, the rain crept in, and I left it a bit and went out too late. So seventh, I think I am. It's not it's not brilliant, but there's not much in it. No, half a second. What about Oldham Park itself as a track? Do you like it? Uh, it's my local track, so yeah, it's great. I'm getting better every time I get in the car, as I say, I've not done nothing for a couple of years, so we're using this year as like a test season, uh, as you will. So we're going P2 in this first race, and P1 in the second race, so we've got some high hopes for this weekend, hopefully. Yeah, I need to, uh, I need to get two solid finishes, really, hopefully first, uh, you know, and uh, try and build a bit more of a lead than I've got. I, uh, I didn't have such a good uh, end to the second race at, uh, at Snesterton, so uh, although I'm still at the top, it's, it's pretty tight. So, uh, yeah, just about getting away cleanly and, and trying to get some, yeah, just make some space and, yeah, bang in some consistent laps. Good pole position there for this first race coming up, and we finished on a high at Snetterton. So uh, how are you feeling as we go into this first one? I'd like to finish this first race on a high this time. Um, that, that is the plan. Uh, really pleased with the qualifying. The guys were still working on the car well into late last night, changing the gearbox. Had a gearbox failure in testing yesterday. So it was a little bit of leap into the dark, but it was faultless. They've done a great job there. All about getting away clean off the line. Hasn't been my strong point this season. So if I can get away clean, and if Simon alongside me can get away clean, then uh, I think we're in for a great race. Uh, P3 position, but we had a couple of uh, problems in there in qualifying. What happened? Yeah, we had a water hose blow off, uh, which is a shame because I was actually starting to feel comfortable. But uh, we'll see how we do. Hopefully, we've got some good race pace. I think it could be interesting, it could still be damp out the back. So fingers crossed. Uh, I believe it's not just a case of putting the water in there. Your guys have had to work pretty hard in the last hour. Yeah, but don't tell them that. They're not supposed to know. It's all fine. Qualifying done, ready for race one now. Qualified third, so how are you feeling? Uh, a bit confident to be honest, I think there was a lot more in it than I actually done but the weather just determined what we could do really, some got lucky, some of us didn't but I'm happy with where I am and hopefully we'll pull it out of the bag. Mike Price secured pole position in qualifying alongside Simon Clark with Craig Wilkins third and Pete Morris on row two. Mark McAleer and Steve Cheatham row three, followed by Glenn Broster and Chris Dyer. Kevin Harrison and James Cayley next from class two pole position man Toby Barlow, then Jake McAleer, James Coleman, Kevin Molyneux, Ross Morris with Matt Carl Henney 16th, Del Brett, Richard Baston, Steve Freeman and Max Wollstenholm completing the 20 car grid here for round 11 of this year's championship. Lights are on. Out go the lights and away we go Pete Morris from Fourth on the grid makes a very good start indeed. Morris up and challenging Simon Clark. So good start. Very tricky conditions as you can see here. A lot of rain earlier on. The circuit still far from ideal. As we ride on board with the class two pole position man Toby Barlow. Down cascades for the first time here at Alton Park. This 2.6 mile lap. Simon Clark leading from Pete Morris. It's Craig Wilkins up in third position. Toby Barlow's got up ahead of a couple of the Class 1 runners, but not for long because James Cayley slices through on the inside line. You've got a great view there of Toby looking across. 
as James Cayley came through. I think he was half expecting that. James going high and wide into the banking at Shell Oil's corner. There is Steve Cheatham busy chasing Chris Dyer at the moment. Steve's had quite a bit of success around Alton Park over the years. I'll come back to statistics a little bit later on once the race has settled down, but it's Simon Clark, the championship leader, coming down into the chicane for the first time. Pete Morris looking good in P2 at the moment. Steve Cheatham having a very close look at Chris Dyer. Down behind them is Glenn Broster. Interesting to see Glenn still in, in his uh, Janetta overalls, but nice to see him back racing Porsche again. Haven't seen him since Donington Park, first round of the year. Seventh and sixth places for him there. As Mike Price looks up the inside line there of Craig Wilkins. Wasn't quite enough time to do that. And very nearly locked up. Fights the car, holds on to fourth place. Chris Dyer couldn't quite get past him. Steve Cheatham has a look on the inside line, goes tight, and that means that Glenn Broster challenges on the outside line in the 15 car. Cheatham holds on to it. And off go, that's Matt Kyle Henny, one of the front runners in class two, glances the tyres, hopefully not into retirement for Matt. But having problems, Chris Dyer is now passed by Steve Cheatham. Oh, but Cheatham, the back end comes around. Right in front of Kevin Harrison's car. The rest of them have to take evasive action, including Jake McAleer. Well, it, it is tricky out there, and a wheel on the dirt, and that's Kevin Harrison going around. It is so, so tricky. The track not fully dry. Here comes Matt Kyle Henny. I think this is probably going to be round in, into diagnostics in pit lane. You can see the, the dampness on the track there. No, well, Matt carries on. Fair play to him as we focus on second position because the championship leader, Simon Clark, is there he is, already through Britons as Pete Morris approaches it. Podium Pete, second in the championship to Simon Clark. Would dearly love to be up ahead, still developing the 997, of course. There is Toby Barlow. And safety car being deployed with a number of cars spinning off in the wet conditions. I always say that uh, a Porsche in wet conditions requires the most skill out of any of the motor racing formulae that, that I commentate on. Very, very tricky conditions. Um, and I think probably we're lucky it wasn't more damage than we saw. Great driving from everybody to uh, keep things in one piece. This has negated the gap that Simon Clark had built up over those early tours. Safety car lights are out, and Simon's got the job of restarting the Cayman from the 997 of Pete Morris. Craig Wilkins in the 996. Michael Price, second in round 10, our previous race at Snetterton. Good field of cars. Matt Kyle Henny has rejoined at the back. Then Broster there as well, hoping to make up some ground as we go racing again here at Alton Park. It was uh, an all County Classics front row here because there is a team competition as well in the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Team Strasser leading that at the moment from RVR. RVR effectively the uh, McAleers and Steve Freeman. Pete Morris still chasing hard. Peter has not had a DNF so far this year. Very, very consistent and quick as well. Greeted by the green flags into Shell Oil's corner. And Peter probably won't thank me for referencing no DNF so far this year because that can be a little bit of a curse when a commentator says that. Here's Toby Barlow. Toby had uh, a great induction into the championship. There in the 41 car is Kevin Molyneux coming under pressure from Steve Cheeson, recovering from his moment it wasn't on the grass it was just getting a wheel on the curbs and you just have to run a fraction wide if the curbs are wet to cause a spin and a problem and Steve was really in attacking mode when that happened Craig Wilkins is in attacking mode at the moment having a very good look at Pete Morris he's the onboard from Pete still in P2 his uh, arch rival there with Michael Price back in fourth place at the moment this is only Michael's third meeting of the season Simon Clark the championship leader 13 points clear of Pete Morris Simon having had a retirement in round 10 
race two at Snetterton. But remember, there are drop scores to take into account as well, and that will be one of Simon's. So after drop scores, Simon a in a little bit more of a healthy position over Pete Morris, who, who gets punished really on the drop scores. Because he's finished every race, he drops more scores than the championship leader. But Pete's are running in second place and showing the great form that we've known from Pete over the years. Running well here, trying to close in. He's had a fascinating battle this year with the uh, Caymans proving themselves to be very useful. There's the 944 of Richard Baston again. Great, great to see him back. Haven't seen him since the first round of the year. Matt Kyle Henney has got a problem and will become the second retirement of the race. Kevin Harrison, the first retirement we saw spinning out sadly. And Ross Morris coming out of the pits and rejoining. Ross, the Class 2 championship leader and indeed the overall championship leader on 292 points. Ross has had one DNF so far, round four on the Grand Prix circuit of Brands Hatch. Chris Dyer has had two wins so far this year in the Cayman. As I was coming back to saying, in Class 1, the, the battle between the Caymans, the 997s and the 996s has been superb to watch all year. There's Del Brett mixing it with some of the front-running Class 2 cars. His debut season as far as Class 1 is concerned. And Pete Morris here, you can see the dry line from Pete's camera. And still trying to hunt down Simon Clark, who's out front. Clark setting some good times. Matt Carhenny, meanwhile, in pit lane. Miss Matt at Snetterton, but great to see him back out. But not the happiest of races for Matt Kyle Henney, who has had uh, a brace of podia this season so a very welcome addition to the championship Michael Price getting closer to Craig Wilkins there is Del Brett once again in the 59 card Del qualifying 12th in class one and mixing it up as you can see now Michael Price really having a go at Craig Wilkins here for third place this is the battle for the final podium position here in race one we've also got Chris Dyer in the mix as well Chris one of the Team Championship leading Strasse cars running well too. <music> Class 2 battles as ever in evidence with the 47 car, that's James Coleman, up ahead of Kevin Molyneux, second and third in Class 2 at the moment. Those guys working hard after relatively late starts to start the championship and climbing up. But Toby Barlow looking for a second win on the bounce. Won the Class 2 honours in race 2 at Snetterton. And is ahead of this battle. There goes Toby, just through shot there. And we pick up on multiple race winner James Coleman, just ahead of Kevin Molyneux. Very competitive class, the Boxsters, this year. Toby Barlow, having said it's competitive, he's got a very big lead, the pole position man. Local game for this one, you can see the Porsche Centre Chester logo on the side of the Martini livery as we go back to the podium battle. Pete Morris still in P2 and Michael Price really putting the pressure on Craig Wilkins at the moment. You can see little spits and spots of dirt over the circuit where cars have rejoined. Still very tricky conditions out here today. Through Dearly goes the podium battle in the in class two. Toby Barlow getting away. Toby's got fastest lap in class as well. And contact between Molyneux and Coleman. And it really is close out there. I think Molyneux survived that. Certainly the car has as a whole. The wing mirror hasn't. And I think Molyneux's going to get stuck back in and have a look what's the inside there, outside as they run down the hill, but we pick up with the race leaders again. This is the third place car, Craig Wilkins. Craig usually on or near the podium when we see him racing. He seems to have shaken off Michael Price at the moment. Just behind them, Chris Dyer and Simon Clark in his Cayman still out front. So it's Cayman's first and fifth at the moment. And Pete Morris coming under a little bit of pressure from Craig Wilkins, who has broken these shackles from Michael Price. Here's the back of second place in Class 2, and it's still James Coleman there, but grabbing the curb and losing a place is the 41 car of Kevin Molyneux. I was about to say, I think he's kept his uh, third position in Class 2, but we saw Richard Baston in the blue 944 nipping past and moving up into a Class 2 podium position. Pete Morris still second again. We've got Michael Price closing up again. 
Michael, for my money, like Pete Morris's uh, due a win, Pete won the opening race of the year, you'll recall, at Donington Park. Uh, Michael certainly due one. As two, really, you have to say, is Craig Wilkins, who's always up there. Been such a competitive championship this season as Pete Morris shows us some relatively clear circuit. Back with Toby Barlow leading in class two. Toby joined us at round five, which was our second Brands Hatch race. We had the Grand Prix circuit supporting Blancpain rounds three and four. And then the Deutschfest rounds five and six. There is Matt Kyle Henny still racing at the moment, a little way down after his visit to the pits. James Coleman still in P2 at the moment, multi-race winner earlier in the season, as we said. This quartet still offering us great racing for second position. It could go any way from these four. And it's still Pete Morris at the head podium, Pete, as they call him, has had such a great season, drops a seventh and fifth place in the scores thus far. Not that far away, actually, from Simon Clark And Pete Morris driving, having to really uh, drive defensively as Michael Price is now passed by Chris Dyer. Dyer up into fourth place. So good move from him. Mike Price possibly has he got an issue? He's not dropping away too much at the moment. So a good pass by Chris Dyer, who won round two at Donington Park and won round ten our last race at Snetterton. First of which at Donington Park was his first outright victory former overall champion in class two as, as I know we've told you many times but it's worth underlying that you can win the overall championship from class two through dearly it goes Pete Morris Michael Price gets a wheel oh no hate to see that a wheel on the curbs and that car is heavily into the barrier very very sadly that's going to be a safety car I'm sure and that may well I was wondering whether they would red flag the race because we are a fair way into the proceedings but the safety car's coming out and the officials here will give us as many laps as they possibly can. There's Kevin Molyneux followed by Max Kyle Henny, his dad of course a Porsche Carrera Cup racer. Confirmation the safety car's coming out, Toby Barlow goes through. Disappointment here for Toby Barlow because the lead that he has built up over James Coleman is going to be negated now fastest lap of the race so far Simon Clark 1 minute 50.861 uh, I'm pleased that Mike Price is okay I'm not pleased to see the car neither will Mike be not what we what we, what we want to see at all so coming down behind the safety car Simon Clark fastest lap of the race Toby Barlow is fastest unsurprisingly in class two having actually set his fastest lap on lap seven, one minute 56.989. Simon Clark's lap, a shade under 90 miles an hour, so very quick times, despite the tricky nature of the circuit. As you've seen, as soon as you get a wheel out on the kerbs, they, they might the track itself probably dry enough, but if you just go wide, tiniest of a mistake, you get punished big time, sadly, as we saw there for Mike Price, who joins several other cars on the sidelines here I would say it's unlikely we're going to see that car for race two which is a pity Simon Clark though race leader looking for a fourth win of the season here as I said they've been very evenly shared around but Simon has been pretty consistent worst result apart from the non-finish at round 10 was a 10th place at Donington Park in round two so it wasn't the best of starts to the season for the 23 car, but since then has rattled off the points. It's on 239 points at the, at the moment. Pete Morris on 226. So it's Clark from Morris Wilkins, Chris Dyer. Mark McAleer is fifth. I haven't mentioned Mark McAleer. They're in the 85 car is Richard Baston. And it is checkered flag under safety car here at Alt Park. Simon Clark, therefore, taking a win from Pete Morris and Craig Wilkins. Let's have a look at the official result for you. Clark takes the win. Morris second from Craig Wilkins and Chris Dyer. Mark McAleer in fifth ahead of Steve Cheatham. Glenn Broster in seventh. Then James Cayley. Toby Barlow wins class two ahead of James Coleman. And then Del Brett. Richard Baston third in class two ahead of Kevin Molyneux. 
Jake McAleer completing the race finishes. Let's go down to victory lane. Pete Moore, second place there. A great battle there. The safety car came out. It may have ruined it for some, but uh, I think that held the place for you. Well, I, don't know. I was making it really wide, so I was, I was settling for second. I thought about letting Craig pass to chase for first place, try and take points off. But nah, I thought, I want, I want, me, I want me podium. But I'm, only, I'm starting from six on the grid, so I'm qualifying for the second race wasn't that good. So we'll see, see what happens in the next race. But yeah, great race. Craig, fantastic race there. Now, Pete was doing a lot of defending there. You were trying to get past flashing your lights and so forth, but still a good finish. I was trying to distract him, that's for sure. Well, yeah, it's a good finish for us with some of the issues we've had. Um, it's interesting, I still maintain the 996 and the 997 do their lap time differently. And there's just areas that certainly Pete's car isn't quite as capable as mine. Um, well, I've got to say, right until his unfortunate instance, it looks as if Michael Price had a, a very good car underneath him. Good result there, not, not easy though. Uh, no, it's always a physical circuit, it's quite demanding, um, but uh, yeah, just trying to avoid avoid a lot of spinning class one cars there and uh, just sort of make it through unscathed, but got a reasonable start, which is which is good, um, yeah, really good. Consistency is key and you've certainly got that this season. Yeah, we've been uh, quite consistent this year, yeah, top three in every finish, so yeah, been pleased with that so far. Busy race, you managed to keep out of trouble on that one. Yeah, it was uh, like dodgems on the third lap, I think it was, yeah, tough one to get through, but we slowed up enough, luckily, to get through. But yeah, there's quite a few cars went out then, I think. Challenging race, especially this first couple of laps. It was, it was great fun. It was, you know, busy, but yeah, great fun, great fun. Tricky conditions, we've had a torrential rain, it's dried off, still some wet lines there out there though. It was, but it wasn't too bad, it really wasn't. It was, you know, slippy-ish, but no, it's great. The 944 makes you look better than you are, I think. <laughs> Steve, great to see the 43 machine uh, gleaming as ever there. Now, race one was a bit of a mixed uh, bag for everybody. Uh, certainly on lap two there for yourself. Bit of an instant, dropped back, came back again. So, uh, certainly not boring. Uh, no, <laughs> just put a bit of a show on really. Not, not intentional, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I made a move on Chris and uh, unfortunately I hit the damp patch on the inside going into uh, Old Hall and it just shoved me right out to the outside and put a wheel on the dirt and that was that really. Got to say that um, the Lodge Sports Racing team, uh, you've progressed a lot over the last few years, not only with your own driving skill and style and results, but with the actual vehicles and so forth. You, you're into racing a lot at the moment. Yeah, we've, we've, we've took two championships on this year, so we've, we've had a busy season. Uh, the other one's going well, but this one, we've had a few problems, but hopefully by the end of the year we can, uh, we can get things moving. Jake, bit of unusual to see uh, the result of that first race there. We saw you in the pits, what was going on? Yeah, well, we uh, we started for, started 12th, um, unfortunately qualified badly this morning, but clogged fuel pump, so uh, yeah, way down on power in qualifying, which was a nightmare, got a good start, getting two places, and then yeah, just the car spinning in front of us, we uh, didn't really have a chance, made contact, unfortunately, with my dad, and then from there I thought I burst the radiator, so that's why I came in, unfortunately couldn't get it back out in time before the safety car came around, so went a lap down, really. So reset now, good to go for the second one? Yeah, hopefully. Got to come in with a bit more optimism and hope it goes all right, I hope. Best of luck. Thank you very much. I noticed you actually went into the pits. I, initially I thought it was a tyre thing, but it wasn't. What, what was the story there? I was going round. I made up two places off the first lap and I thought it was all going well. As we came up to sell oils on lap two, my brake pedal went straight to the floor when I had no brakes at all. So managed to get round the corner somehow, got it into the pits and the lads sorted the problem out. And I went back out and the same thing happened again about five laps later. Obviously a fixable problem, but not fixable in the time you had. And even with the safety car coming out there, just ran out of time. Yeah, in the end, it was, it was more of a, you know, a in the pit sort of fixed job between races. Hope it doesn't happen again. It shouldn't do. And go out there and see what I can do. Very unusual race overall. Conditions were tough as well. It, it wasn't too bad. It was a bit greasy, but it was dry, so... The car felt good initially, I mean, I, I got a great start, two places off the first lap, so try and do the same again.
Ready for our second race of the weekend here at Alton Park. Simon Clark on pole position, a gap where Mike Price should have been, and that will be understandable after what happened to him, sadly, in race one. Row two, Craig Wilkins and Glenn Broster. Class two, headed by Toby Barlow from Kevin Molyneux. Another gap where Matt Kyle Henney should have been. Ross Morris qualified fourth in class, ahead of Richard Baston and James Coleman. So a couple of cars down, but an impressive field about to get underway. Lights out, round 12 underway, good start by Glenn Broster from the outside of the front row. Craig Wilkins is having a look in the middle to try and challenge for second position. Wilkins gets it. Broster down to third. Chris Dyer fourth. James Cayley then followed by Pete Morris. Mark McAleer, Steve Cheatham, Kevin Harrison is next up. Then Jake McAleer as they go down the hill for the first time. But it's Simon Clark looking to make it a double. He is in lead position. They'll head down into Lakeside. Big moment for Craig Wilkins. And Glenn Broster's through. Glenn Broster read that well. Passes Simon Clark. Goes through into the lead. I think Clark's lost second as well. In car with Toby Barlow. Down in second. That's Kevin Molyneux in front. Holds the lead in class two. But Glenn Broster read that superbly. Maybe a little bit fortuitous as well. The question that I have is, did Craig Wilkins recover near the front or has he lost a lot of time but it's the number 15 car that he's out front Glenn Broster super opening few courts good start from him sideways moment for Steve Cheatham probably one of the most successful drivers in this championship all part six class wins over the year it's not going to be one today Chris Dyer got through into second so we've got Caymans second and third the championship leader in third place Pete Morris the sixth starting car on the grid Qualified seventh, but with Mike Price not there, started sixth, and he's up into fourth place. So only one place away from his customary podium. So Pete having a good go. Then it's James Cayley, followed by Craig Wilkins, who's recovered well in the grey and yellow car. And who is behind Craig? Is it going to be Mark McAleer coming into shot? Can't quite see at the moment. I think it is Mark McAleer. So Glenn Broster out front. Things starting to settle down a little bit, as they do. Plenty of time, sideways moment there for James Cayley and that means that the number 11 car of Craig Wilkins is all over the back of him, hasn't quite got enough momentum to go through. Down behind Mark McAleer, it was McAleer in the black and blue car. Behind him is Steve Cheatham still going. You can see the track is still not ideal. I think Ross Morris was maybe understating things uh, in race number one it is still very slippery if you get out on the curb I think Ross obviously did a masterly job of keeping off the curbs in race one but it did claim some casualties unfortunately and also interesting to hear what Craig Wilkins was saying about the difference in the 996s and the 997s and also fascinating to hear Pete Morris's view that he didn't he considered letting Craig Wilkins go through and try and take points away from Simon Clark but ultimately didn't do that Pete, as ever, the sportsman, was thinking about the championship a little bit, but raced for the race's sake to get the podium, and, you know, Pete had a good race. There is Mark McAleer, quiet race one for him, fifth position. Steve Cheatham and Kevin Harrison, all fairly close as well. Nice to see Kevin there, sort of bouncing back from that nasty qualifying accident at Brands Hatch a while ago. Glenn Broster still leading, gets a little bit of a gap now over Chris Dyer in the number nine. Simon Clark still in third, still decent points here. For the 23 if he was to bag a third place finish still wouldn't constitute one of his drop scores so all looking okay at the moment for the championship leader Glenn Broster who is I think opening up a wee bit of a gap over the two Caymans who aren't quite engaged in battle yet but may well do so as they go under the Paul Warwick Bridge Simon Clark is challenging now. You can see the wide line that he's taking there, trying to close up on and then work his way, or work out how to get past that Strasser livery on the back. Strasser leading the team's championship at the moment from RVR and County Classics. County Classics won't be scoring a, a shed load of points in this race, sadly, with Michael Price not starting it. So Strasser could be on their way to another team's title. There is Richard Baston, podium finishing 9.44 in class two in race number one. A good result for him and really notice that if you've got a 9.44 tucked away anyway, you can come and race it in this championship and have the potential to get on the podium as Richard did in race number one in class two. That was superb to see 
Now the camera angle here from Pete Morris is slightly askew, but it sort of accentuates the banking there at Shell Oil's corner. Uh, but it is actually a, a steep corner, as I've said many times in, in the coverage from Alton Park. As Craig Wilkins continues to challenge James Cayley, Mark McAleer in the mix as well as they come down from Hilltop. And let's have a look at... Uh, McAleer is going to look down the inside line here. Steve Cheatham going down the inside line as well, challenging Mark McAleer to try and go through. And there's two cars up. McAleer continues, but Cheatham is off with Craig Wilkins. Wilkins has another moment. Now, we didn't see what happened there, but it was something to do with the 43 car looking. Steve Cheatham looking down the inside line in the game, and it really isn't Steve Cheatham's season. And it's not Craig Wilkins' race here as we pick up with Toby Barlow. He's in third place at the moment in Class 2. Looking at Ross Morris, who is in second in Class 2 at the moment. Back to the overall lead. You can see Glenn Broster starting to get away. Are we going to see a Glenn Broster win here? Certainly made the most of it and he's looking very consistent now this car ha clearly has damage probably from that overtake we saw the beginning of Steve looking down the inside line it looked like he was inside Mark McAleer and then Craig Wilk we the end of it we saw Craig Wilkins in, in trouble so whatever happened happened in that incident and Steve trying to get back to the pits as Pete Morris continues to challenge Simon Clark for third place Pete's got the whiff of his customary podium in his nostrils. They go along Lakeside. There is Steve Cheatham nursing the car back around to pit lane. More importantly, to safety here at Alton Park. Up ahead of him, James Coleman, who's away from a podium finish here. So James Coleman maybe spoke too soon when he said that every finish had been a podium. Back with Chris Dyer in P2. Miller's Oils back Strasser car ahead of the County Classics 23 machine. Then Pete Morris on board with Peter again what a character what a great driver Pete Morris is well so many good drivers in this championship and they enjoy themselves weekend after weekend as Ross Morris nips her into the lead of class two Morris passes Kevin Molyneux the two M's still one and two with Toby Barlow back in third place it's still very close for these top three positions in class two Barlow chasing to try and get another win in class two looks down the inside line is he too far back yes he is locks up grabs the wheel armfuls of lock 10 out of 10 for effort from Toby Barlow loses a wee bit of ground Ross Morris now in the PMC car is out front second position Kevin Molyneux Kevin due a class win as well very consistent driver Kevin Molyneux's been had a retirement sadly in round one of the year but since then has finished all of the races Glenn Broster still out front. The Cayman battle continues in second place. Mark McAleer challenging here. Looks on the inside line of James Cayley. That is a classic Alton Park pass by McAleer. Runs a little bit wide as well. Carried that extra speed through. And you, you see that, but nicely executed. And uh, none too defensive by James Cayley, who realised the faster car was coming through. A nice pass. Back with the leading three Class 2 machines. Remember the Resto Racing classic cars having separate races this weekend they'll be in a separate program as we ride on board with Toby Barlow again in third place it enables us to focus on classes one and two here with a standalone program for the rest of racing boys who reach the climax of their championship Glenn Brost is away and down the road he really is looking good at the moment Chris Dyer twice a winner this year running well no non-finishes over the course of the season so far for Chris Dyer again like Pete Morris another driver who gets hit very hard indeed with drop scores that's the thing if you carry on finishing um, but it's a, a fair point system here's the battle for second Kevin Molyneux still there race one winner right behind him Toby Barlow as we've said on home tarmac trying to close down that livery on the uh, Porsche Porsche Centre Chester Resta Racing car as well. They've got a, a pair of the cars, one in, in Class 2 here, a Resta Racing Class 3 when they join us. And Barlow having a very good look here at Kevin Molyneux. So this goes to show you how close the, the class is. We've brought Ross Morris, championship leader, still out front. And nice to see Ross in a position to, against these fast new drivers in the championship, able to sort of reassert himself at the top of the standings and it just shows how good this class is massive gap back behind the top three though at the moment in class two 
So Morris goes through, breaking away a little bit now from Kevin Molyneux. He's got his mirrors full of Toby Barlow, so that will certainly help Ross, I think, pull away. Certainly had the speed to catch past these guys early on. In car with Barlow again, very slight uphill climb across the start finish line now tees up the inside has a look too far back at the moment on Kevin Molyneux takes a wide line into Old Hall this could carry extra speed down through Dentons and Cascades he's having a look at the inside line there nothing quite doing might try and tee up the inside line on the way in towards Lakeside too far back at the moment couple of lengths of drift but might get more momentum now here's Chris Dyer in the number nine car still there in second position with Simon Clark and Pete Morris chasing then Mark McAleer Glenn Broster is I was going to say away in the distance but he's off on the grass Glenn Broster retires from the the leader is out such a shame for Glenn and robs us of the potential of a battle for the lead Glenn Broster is sadly out of the race and that means that Chris Dyer will take over and Pete Morris is on for a potential podium we're looking at the battle for the lead now between the two Caymans Simon Clark busy chasing Chris Dyer so Dyer on he'll get with him one win here if he holds on to this he'll hold on looking under the front end is the uh, it's Glenn Broster of the 15 car, he's out of the race, such a pity. First retirement from four races for Glenn. And it would have, I think it would have been very difficult to have beaten Glenn Broster in this one. Mark McAleer's got the fastest lap of the race, incidentally, at the moment. So Mark showing some good pace. And he now is in fourth position. Kevin, Kevin Harrison behind him. There is Jake McAleer in the 44, having put his problems to bed. And we've got a string of all of the cars very close together at the front of the field. And a great battle on for second position in class two as well as Toby Barlow has a look at Kevin Molyneux. So superb racing here in race two. In car with Barlow again, still chasing hard. Will he get through? Join us after the break to see. This now, the battle for the lead. Championship leader Simon Clark against another championship front runner, Chris Dyer. The battle of the two Caymans. In car with the third place man, Pete Morris. Multiple champion, of course, Pete Morris in the 997. Clark looks one way. Is he going to go back to the outside line and get momentum? No, sticks to the inside. Pops his nose. A speculative look down the inside line for Simon Clark. Wonderful racing from the Petro Canada Lubricants Porsche Club Championship with Pirelli. Round 12 of the 2019 championship and superb racing not only in class one but also in class two here this is for second spot and it's Kevin Molyneux there at the moment Toby Barlow has been harrying him for the last few laps it's allowed Ross Morris to get away Ross with his own speed of course doing the job anyway so Morris leads class and will extend his class two championship lead in car with Toby Barlow again through Deer Leap up onto the start finish line here comes Ross Morris going through very good lead for the number three car we're going to see a double Morris family podium now as through on the inside line goes Toby Barlow oh we're going to see Kevin fight back doesn't look like it I thought he might go for the cut back on the inside again you can see Old Hall super place to make a pass if you've got the momentum so Barlow into P2 great in car shot working hard see his eyes focusing on the front in the mirror this is the battle for the lead though Chris Dyer is very much in a race here and this is as much about the championship as it is about the race because Chris Dyer has been scoring very well indeed all season does have to drop a few more points than Simon Clark does in second place but look how closely matched these two Caymans are and make no mistake about it Simon Clark could sit back and collect the points but he's having a look at every opportunity the one thing he won't do, and again, this could be famous last words, is, is go for a lunge. I don't think Simon Clark will do that. Are we looking a bit tail happy there for the leader? Pete Morris still in third. Still running is James Coleman. James, a winner four times in class two over the course of the season. And on for some more points here. Toby Barlow and Kevin Molyneux now separated by a couple of car lengths. So, class two looking settled at the moment with 
Ross Morris there. Toby Barlow is the fastest driver on track, though, in car number 40. He's got the fastest lap of the race. Mark McAleer still quickest overall. It's on lap six. 96 miles per hour. Actually, a tad slower than the fastest lap in race one. And we were talking about conditions being better but the, the drivers very clearly were, were gunning for it in race one. Here we go again with Toby Barlow trying to close down, taking uh, little snippets out of Ross Morris, but Ross responding lap on lap as well. Here's the battle for the lead again, as you were. These two, now if they slow each other up, is Pete Morris going to close in? If this battle gets more fraught, it's not only going to be bring Pete Morris into it, it's going to bring... Mark McAleer and Kevin Harrison into the mix as well. Here's the view from Pete. This is how a multi-champion does it. Superb view, still there in third place. So it's Kevin Harrison next up from Jake McAleer. And, uh, well, we've lost Mark McAleer out of the equation. So Mark McAleer joining the list of retirees. There in 59 is Del Brett who's running in sixth position in class one. So Delon for a decent points haul here. So you can see here, Ross Morris being closed down on by Toby Barlow. Toby has closed the gap with that fastest lap. Has he left things a little bit too late though to challenge Ross for the lead? Ross will see that car coming in his mirrors. Toby Barlow in the championship at round five so not a major threat to Ross in the championship is closing in Kevin Molyneux not too far behind as well closing stages of this race this could be a photo finishing class two Toby's best time 154 614 just a shade under 85 miles an hour still running but I don't think able to complete the requisite distance for the race is James Coleman James in close proximity of Del Brett. Crossing line there. Here comes Del down towards us. James Coleman uh, still fighting. If he can complete enough distance, then he will in the 47 car. Back to the lead. And it looks like Chris Dyer has responded superbly. He's got a little bit of breathing space at the moment over Simon Clark. Peter Morris remains in third place. So it's Morris from Kevin Harrison having a much better race here. Jake McAleer in fifth. Through Dilly, they go once again. Now it looks like Simon Clark is ramping things up and getting closer. They cross the line and go on to the last lap here. And Simon Clark very definitely having a go for the lead. Goes wide at Old Hall. This again could generate a little bit more speed out of the corner. Is it me or is the rear end on the leader's car looking a little bit more loose than Simon Clark's machine? They go down the hill for the last time. There's Del Brett. Dell looking to rack up another race finish. It'll be a ninth finish of the season for him. Joined us at event two of the championship. It's closed up for the lead in class two. Ross Morris still there at the moment. I don't think Toby Barlow is quite close enough. Although there is another entire lap for those two cars and that's 2.6 miles. Here they come up to Lodge Corner. They're all on the lead lap, which is absolutely stunning all the class two cars on the lead lap with the class one machines and here comes the quintet effectively fighting it out for the overall win Toby Barlow is close enough now he is very much on the case of Ross Morris so we'll see what Ross is made of he's come through the field made up a couple of passes and now under pressure back with the race leader though and still there is Chris Dyer looking for win number three of the season Kevin Harrison in fourth place, just shy of the podium at the moment. I don't think he's going to reel in Peter Morris equally. Morris, I don't think, is going to catch Simon Clark, but we'll see whether Simon... I tell you what, Chris Dyer looks really strong here. The last lap, he's pulled away, and he's going to take a third win of the season. Doing well as he comes now up to Lodge Corner, and Simon Clark coming under pressure from Pete Morris. Morris now challenging for second. It's going to be Dyer's win, surely. Jake McAleer challenging Kevin Harrison and having looked for fourth place, but it's going to be Chris Dyer that takes the win. Pete Morris having a run for second, up to the flag. It is a win for Dyer, and Clark just holds on to second place from Pete Morris. 
Morris in third, Kevin Harrison fourth, Jake McAleer in fifth place. Here's the battle for class two. Toby Barlow did get close to Ross Morris, but I don't think he's going to be able to challenge from there. Two, maybe three car lengths down, and it's going to be Ross Morris back on the top step of the podium through Deer Leap, up the hill. Where's the checker? Watch for the checker flag. There it is. Ross Morris wins round 12 for class two. Very close. Closely attended by Toby Barlow with Kevin Molyneux there about to take the third step on the podium here at Alton Park. Here's how they finished. A win for Chris Dyer, Simon Clark, Championship Leader, second, Pete Morris, third from Kevin Harrison and Jake McAleer. Ross Morris winning Class 2 from Toby Barlow and Kevin Molyneux, Del Brett, completing the finishers in ninth position. Mark McAleer sadly retired, but did get the consolation of the fastest lap. Chris, another great result for the Strasser machine. Don't know what it is about you, but your strong finishes these past few weekends. Yeah, I was just, um, I was a bit uh, upset with me qualifying, but managed to do a uh, good start in race one. But uh, that's just made up for it, that win. Um, Broster just had a problem, so I, I was sort of inherited in, for, in first place, but I had to work hard at it to keep uh, Simon Clark behind. Well, you certainly kept the pressure on there every lap. Yeah, it was frustrating, but it was the I, I had my uh, I had my brain. I was using my brain this time, and uh, I just thought that's. Uh, although I felt like I got a fair chunk more pace than Chris, I just thought as long as he's not backing me up into traffic. And in the end, like I got, I actually just feel lucky. I finished. I, I lost brake pedal at about halfway around the second, uh, the last lap. The servo's just gone, so it's a dead heavy pedal. So I had to. I slowed right down, and uh, I only just managed to hold second. So. Yeah, that's kind of that's a good weekend, I think, from a from a points perspective. Got to say, it, podium, Pete, yet another podium. That, well, yeah, I, um, I tried hard, uh, had a good start. Um, sec, yeah, but it was a third place in the end. I nearly had uh, with Clark at the end, but uh, so a third and a second, good points. I mean, we'll be teammates, so I think we're th still second e equal in the championship. I'll have, to, I'll have to get my calculator out to check the points, but uh, cracking race, I loved it, yeah. A punch of the air in victory as you come over that chequered flag, told the whole story, I think. I think this win has meant more to me this season than any other. With the struggle I had in race one and not finishing, and then not knowing if it was going to even finish this race, to come away with a win was just amazing. And I'm, I'm over the moon, to be honest. I'm knackered, but I'm over the moon. What a fantastic race, one of the closest ones I think we've seen for a while in Class 2s. Yeah, it was great. It's great, hard work. Uh, my power steering, um, at the end of race one, we had an issue with the power steering. Um, pump, pump started to sort of make a lot of noise halfway through the race. And um, yeah, this time we you know, got to the sort of the assembly area and realized, yeah, it, it's not working very well. So I had about a quarter of the assistance. So that was very, very hard work. But Ross and Kev, fantastic race for both. And you know, close, fair, yeah, brilliant race. It's getting a bit of a habit this with the 41 machine. So how was that one? I oh, know that was really good, really good. Tough race, tough race. I had a great start, I was away. Um, Toby had a little sneaky move on me, sneaked him in. And uh, not Toby, sorry, uh, Ross. And then I had to defend Toby the whole way round. Mm. And then he had a good move on me, two laps from the end, and that was it. That's what it's all about, though, isn't it? It's fun. Oh, mate, it was proper fun. We had a good, good race there, good race. It overheated again, so I just backed off once I knew I had no chance of catching Toby, and that was it. Yeah, it was a good race there. Absolutely no need for Peter Morris to get his calculator out. We've done the sum. Simon Clark leads by 22 points from podium Pete. Chris Dyer in third, then Jake McAleer. Mark McAleer fifth ahead of Andy Toon, then James Cayley and Kevin Harrison. Class two headed by Ross Morris from Kevin Molyneux, then Toby Barlow and Steve Freeman, James Coleman and Matt Kyle Henney in sixth place ahead of Angus Archer and Trevor Lewis. The presentations at the end of the day, as ever, were very well received. The champagne was enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed the programme and we look forward to your company next time out. The final round of the championship at Donington Park. Thanks for watching and bye bye for now.